Greetings, and welcome to the Double Take demonstration of Double Take Move Full Server to ESX Migration. In this short video, we're going to show you how easily you can migrate from anywhere into the ESX platform utilizing Double Take Move. So let's go ahead and get started. What I have currently is I have a Windows 2012 R2 machine. It's a virtual machine on Hyper-V with an AMD processor. And I'm going to be migrating that into my vSphere environment utilizing Double Take Move. The vSphere environment is an Intel-based environment, so we'll also see that kind of change as well. I've installed DoubleTake on my source machine, the 2012R2 server in Hyper-V, and I also have an appliance virtual machine in my vSphere environment that's running 2012R2 as well, and I have DoubleTake installed there. I put the DoubleTake Move licensing on both servers, and now I'm ready to get started. I open up the DoubleTake console that I have installed on a third machine for management purposes, and I've added those servers to the server page. If you look at the Double Take console, you'll see it looks a little bit differently in 8.0. We've added some neat features in here, such as tips, a context-sensitive search, and we got rid of the getting started. So it really makes it a lot easier to get protected or migrated a lot faster. Simply right-click the server, and because I only have a Double Take Move license on it, my only option is to migrate. I'm immediately taken over to the server workload section, so this skips several steps. The job we're going to be doing today is the full server to Hyper-V or ESX migration. Right now it doesn't know, but once we choose our target, it'll know it's the ESX migration. All the volumes on the right are selected. I only have the C volume. I can't deselect that, but I can go into my replication rules and deselect any folders, or I can also use wildcards to include or exclude any files. I don't want to necessarily do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next and select my target. My target, again, is going to be a virtual machine within my vSphere environment. That's this machine right here that I have Double Take installed on. If I selected the Hyper-V server here, I would go through the Hyper-V workflow. But that's not what we're doing today. So I'll go ahead and select my appliance virtual machine and click Next. Because it recognized that was a virtual machine inside of ESX, it actually now asks for either vCenter credentials or ESX credentials. So if you don't have vCenter, you can still use this workflow. It works absolutely fine. I already have that in here, but in case I didn't, I can go ahead and say find a new VMware server, and I could put in the vCenter or ESX server here. But since it's already there, I'll go ahead and select it and go next. If there's an untrusted SSL certificate, it's going to ask you to install this certificate as well, so I'll go ahead and click OK at this point. Now you get to the Set Options page. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I highly recommend hitting F1 and you get detailed information on every job option that's available for our full server to ESX migration. There's quite a few, and we're going to go over just a few. The first thing I want to talk about is the replica virtual machine configuration. By default, the replica that we create is going to match the source, and we can see the source has one socket, one core, and four gigs of memory. So we match that by default, but you can increase or decrease that as needed, so you can really customize the machine. You can specify the network adapter, which virtual switch you want to connect to, and all sorts of good information. Under the volume section, this is specifying the size of the disk that we're going to create. By default, we will match the source's disk size but you can increase that or decrease that. You can also specify the format, the data store, do you want to create a new disk or do you want to use a pre-existing disk? And keep in mind that all the different volumes can be on different data stores so you can optimize for performance. Under Replica Virtual Machine Network Settings, I can choose to keep the IP address of my production environment or I can change the network environment to suit my new subnet. One of the neat things about DoubleTake is the test failover capabilities in our full server to ESX migration workflow is that when you do a test, we can actually connect the replica network to a different, maybe a test network or something like that on test failover. That way, you can do all of your testing without impacting production. We never shut down the source server, so it doesn't affect any users. Once you get all your options set, including route, compression, bandwidth, and things like that, you can go ahead and click Next and get to the summary screen. The summary screen is a pre-flight checklist to make sure everything's okay between the source and target. Once everything comes back with white check marks, you can go ahead and click finish and create the job. If there are any issues, click on the warning or the error and it'll tell you what it is and maybe we can even fix it. So I click finish and now my job is being created. The first thing that happens with this particular job, if I highlight it here, is that the replica virtual machine is being created within my vSphere environment. 
It's creating it with all the settings I did before, and it's creating the disks. Then when it's done, it will take those VMDK files, attach them up to this appliance, that's the R2-2 server, as mount points, and it's going to partition them and format them, and then DoubleTake will start mirroring and replicating directly into the target server, but the VMDKs of the replica virtual machine. Let's take a look at my vSphere environment so we can see the replica virtual machine. I'm in my vSphere environment, and there's the R2-2 server. That's the server as acting as our appliance. And we can see right here, EP Win 2012 R2-1 underscore replica. So that's the one it creates right there. And we can see down below in the recent task that it created it. It configured the virtual machine's disks, and then it attached the virtual machine's disks to the appliance. The mirroring and replication process has begun. Now the mirror will eventually stop once everything is synchronized. However, replication will be ongoing to get all the byte level changes as they occur. This allows us to cut over at any time without doing a final synchronization and minimizes the downtime. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and hang out for a bit and allow this process to complete. Then we're going to make some changes to the data and then we'll do the cutover. And you'll see how quick it is to migrate into ESX from anywhere. Our mirror is nearly complete, but before we do the cutover, I want to go ahead and take a couple actions here. I've connected to the administrative share on that production server that we're going to be migrating, and let's go ahead and let's make a copy of that data folder. What this is going to do is simply create some change so it'll replicate over in real time. I can also delete data if I wanted to, so if I just deleted this data folder, that of course is being sent over in real time as well. We can cut over at any time and keep in mind that we have never taken any user offline for the installation, for the initial configuration of the job, the mirroring, or the replication. I've gone back to the double take console and now we're in a protecting state and we could cut over at any time. Keep in mind that while the replication is ongoing, you can double click the job to get more information. We can also edit the job properties, maybe compression or bandwidth controls. I can also do that pre-flight checklist again to make sure everything is still good before we do the cutover. All that's available to you while the job is running. Before you do the actual cutover though, you want to check one new statistic that we have in Double Take 8, recovery point latency. If this is at zero, what that means is that the source and target are completely in sync and there's not going to be any sort of data loss with this migration. So I know that's going to occur, so now I can go ahead and click the cutover button. We can cut over to live data. We can also do that test cutover that I talked about a little bit earlier. Let's go ahead and do a live cutover and see what actually happens. What's happening at this point is that on the production machine, again in my Hyper-V AMD environment, it is now disconnecting double take and then it's going to go ahead and shut down that machine in Hyper-V. It's going to disconnect the drives from my appliance in ESX. It's going to take those VMDKs, it's going to attach them back up to the replica machine it created within the vSphere environment and then it's going to power it on. All this is really quick, so let's go ahead and check out the Hyper-V environment and the vSphere environment while we're failing over. I've gone over to my Hyper-V environment, and if you can see, it's now just turned off. So again, that's the shutdown process that occurred because of the cutover. Let's go over to our vSphere environment. On the vSphere environment, we can see through the recent tasks at the bottom that the disks have been detached from the R2-2 machine. They have been attached back to the R2-1 machine, and the R2-1 machine has been powered on, and it is now up and running and functional. Going back to the console, I am now completely failed over, so the only thing left for me to do is to delete the job. Also, I've gone over to that administrative share that we had for 2012 R2-1, and we can see I still have that data copy there. I don't have the data folder. Everything is in sync, and this migration just took a couple minutes from beginning to end with Double Take Move. This brings us to the end of the Double Take demonstration of Double Take Move Full Server to ESX Migration. To learn more and to stay informed, please give us a call at the number on your screen or visit us at DoubleTake.com. I'd like to thank you for your time and have a great day.